Lee Nichols, Skybet Championship Team of the Season. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, I, I can't put it into words to be honest. Um, it's it, I didn't. It's not something I thought about at the start of the season, but you know I've worked hard this season, and um, yeah, I couldn't be happier. This season, something we're going to come on to, but I wanted to take the opportunity of sat down having a coffee in a bar. Would be a pint if the cameras were here. Um, to talk about your career as a whole because it's a, an interesting path you've been on. Uh, is it right in thinking you started as a midfielder when you were at Liverpool and then actually went into net later on? Yeah, no, this was when I was a kid. Um, when I was uh, eight and nine, I would play the outfield. And, um, yeah, Danny Ward it was actually, who was the keeper at the time as well. Um, but yeah, there was, was a Liverpool and the opportunity arose for me to go and goal. And, yeah, I was just, yeah, that play I didn't really bother me. I went in goal and, yeah, the rest was history. Whose decision was it to stick you in that? Did, they sort of, did you have a growth spurt and they thought, let's stick the tall lad in or...? No, well, weirdly, it was my brother. My brother used to put me in goal when I was a kid. Um, obviously, my brother's a lot older than me and he used to just put me in, in goal in the back garden and just kick balls at me, basically. And <laughs> he used to say, like, he used to say to my mum and dad, like, he's saving things that people at my age wouldn't save. And, um, when I was at Liverpool, he sort of, sort of just said, "We need a goalkeeper. Do you want to go in goal?" I went in goal. My brother was like, "Yeah, I always knew that you'd be a keeper." And yeah, it was just, it just it meant, was meant to, be. to be. Yeah, yeah. it was meant to be. Was it? Were there outfield players at Liverpool that you looked up to, or did you start looking up to more keepers? Was it sort of what era was it? Jersey Dudek that sort of year? No, well, obviously, I think the main one for Liverpool was Steven Gerrard, wasn't it? Like yeah. he was the one that. Every scouse lad wants to, wants to be, and but yeah, I think once I got into goalkeeping and once I just stuck with it and sort of made it my position, it was around the time of when Casillas broke in. I think he come off the bench in the Champions League final. I watched that game, and I think he was the one that was probably my hero growing up. But obviously, Dudek as well. Yeah, in Istanbul, wobbly legs. Yeah, well, you you enjoy a penalty yourself? Is it all? come from that sort of a thing or has that been something that you've developed as you've got older? No, I've always enjoyed, I, I, yeah, it, there's no pressure on goalkeepers and penalties, I don't think, it's just, it, you know, the pressure's on the striker, so, yeah, like, let's do it, yeah. It's, um, that, that might have actually been one of the, the times when town fans actually sat up and went, oh, we might have somebody on our hands here, the Sheffield Wednesday game in the Cup. Was that a good experience for you, sort of coming into the team and, and getting your career at town off to a good start? No, well, I think it was the ideal start for me personally. You know, it was a clean sheet um, and went to penalties and won on penalties, <laughs> saved two, but the boys scored every pen and they took the pressure off me. But, yeah, it was an ideal start and... Uh, yeah, I couldn't have asked, asked for it to start a better way. You went bouncing back um, from Liverpool to Wigan. Um, Not, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, Sorry. it was. I've done yeah. my research. Yeah, you have. Um, who was it around there that sort of helped at uh, that period in your career? Well, when I left Liverpool, I sort of took a couple of years out of the game. I just wanted to play schoolboy okay. football and wanted to sort Still of. Still in net though. Yeah, I just wanted to play schoolboy football, play for the school and just enjoy playing with football again and um, luckily I, I was playing for Liverpool schoolboys and Dave Watson was the coach for Liverpool schoolboys but was also the youth team coach at Wigan and he sort of asked me to come up for a trial and um, basically just put me straight in the reserves and, and offered me a YTS and that's how the Wigan move came about. Who was there around the similar time as you? Was it Chris Kirkland? Yeah, Kirkland was number one at the time. You know, he was he was someone else that I really looked up to because me growing up as a Liverpool fan and being at the, in the youth teams was, and at the time Kirkland was in the first team, just been both from Coventry and it was someone that I really looked up to. So when I did sign for Wigan, it was, you know, I was working with someone that I'd really looked up to for the past five, six, seven, eight years. How is it for a, a young keeper? Because it's a position where you seem to get better with age. And we see you work with the young lads out on the field and there's certain tips and tricks you even you're giving them now. What was your own progression like? What was you, how were you? Were you a slow learner or was it something you immediately took to? No, well, I think I, I, I took quite quickly to it at Wigan. You know, I think they play the way that I like to play. And, you know, at the time it was my, um, 
Roberto Martinez and he sort of gave me the opportunity to go up and work with the first team quite often. And I th I'd like to think I took it in, in my stride and um, you know it happened quite quickly. I went on loan to Northampton when I was 19 and done quite well there and then for whatever reason it sort of stalled and I had to t take a step back or I had to drop back down the leagues and I I'm working my way back up. You were in the England under 19 set up as well, who was around at that point in your career? Um, so I, I was in a couple of camps, so we had Declan Wood was in the first one, the second one was Jed Steer, third one was Jed Steer and Butland. Okay, Jed's yeah. been at the, the club previously as well yeah. on loan. Uh, it's funny how them things work out. Yeah. Um, was it around that time when you were sort of late teens, early 20s that you thought you could actually kick on and and be a keeper professionally and make a, a real go of it, or was it earlier than that? I've never really thought about it, I've thought about it as in like, yeah, I can make it or yeah, I can sort of kick on and do whatever. I've just been, you know, I've, I've stuck to the same principles since I've, since I've started in the professional game and it's just been just take it one day at a time and make sure you come off the training pitch and you, you, you've given it your all. Did you have any fallbacks then if you weren't thinking about football being a thing? Did anyone ever have a word with you on the side and go, oh, Lee, if this do not work out? No, well, not really. I, I, don't, I did work hard at school, um, but it was sort of when once it was, right, you've got a YTS and you've got a contract, it was, all right, well, it's concentrate I'm all on this. in, yeah. That's interesting to hear because sometimes there's lads, you know, Saab is a, a great example of this at our place who've done, you know, Qualified bricklayer and things yeah. like that, so it's 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 different, isn't it? People have different ways of coming up, which yeah. is interesting. You mentioned the, the Northampton loan. Another place that you went to and and did really well was Bristol Rovers. Are, are they the types of places and experiences that really helped bed you in and, and make you the sort of keeper you are now? Yeah, I wouldn't say I done well at Bristol Rovers. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I just think yeah, it was a tough time. It was sort of you know I think one of the biggest things for a goalkeeper is maybe going and playing consistently and I think I went in the middle of the season and I sort of went down there and like sort of just got thrown in at the deep end and I maybe didn't take it as well as I should have and um, yeah it, it, that's probably one loan that maybe got away from me that I would have liked to have got back and gone but listen it's football I probably learnt more than I did at, from that loan than I did at Northampton where I done really well and we got the playoff final but that's just football and it's it's about learning from their experiences. It's an interesting one for keepers as well because it's such a 100% or zero, you either conceding or you're not sort of a, a thing. How do you have to rationalise things? Because it's, even in training, the lads are rattling things top bin and, and you've got to, you can't get your head down on stuff and especially as a young keeper, how do you have to rationalise that and see you getting better or manage your progression? No, I think it's just, you've just got to, I, you know, I tell, Gio and Chappers all the time, like just have a go, like you never know, like if one's going in top corner just, just throw yourself because you, you, you might get closer than you was last week and then in three weeks time you might get a touch on it and tip it onto the bar, you might tip it around the post, you just never know and it, it, when I said earlier about you know just going out there and working hard and I, I think that's it, it's just about giving your all and try and be as hard as you, hard as, hard as you can be, to be to, for the lads to score pressure. And then, after all that, you had the, the five years at MK Dons. That seemed to be the, the place where you, you became the number one, established yourself until that last season. How was that experience for you as a, as a whole? Yeah, it was good. I, I went down because I sort of got the feeling Wigan wasn't going to give me the chance or the opportunity that I was looking for. And, you know, it, I, I, it's a football club at the end of the day. People make decisions and there's nothing I can do, or, do to change to change what happened or change someone's opinion. But yeah, I went to MK, I went as a number two and um, you know, I, I sat behind uh, Dave Martin for a season. It was good, good with me and I, I learned a lot from him. When I finally got the opportunity, I'd, I'd like to think I took it with both hands. And then that last season was, was strange. You weren't in the side, you, you know, the things in the background before you, you made the decision to come here. Why did you make the decision to come here? Obviously, uh, you know, in the summer we discussed it, but looking back on it, was there certain things that stood out compared to elsewhere you could have gone that, that made you want to, to come to town? 
just the club in general, you know, like I'm Liverpool's not too far, so it was good to get back up north. And but yeah, just the club in general, like not long been out of the Premier League, you know, wanting to build something. And I had a few meetings with a few people from the club, like Clem and Broms and stuff like that. And yeah, it was I was just sold as soon as I heard about it. I was just like, yeah, let's do it. Like let's get, let, let's just get it done. And obviously that that decision seems to have paid off. Skybet Team of the Year, as we as we're saying. You mentioned when we first talked about it that it's not something you thought about. It's a strange one to, to question this because it's. I don't mean to. It sounds as if you question your own ability, but did you expect this season to go as well as it has done for you? I think I believed in myself and believed that it could happen, but I probably would didn't think it would. If yeah. that makes sense. I think. You know, like um, I wouldn't, I back myself to do anything, but I didn't think I'd obviously get in the team of the year, and I didn't think it'd actually happen. And um, yeah, it's just a real honour to do it, and and I know how hard I've worked for, and I know how people, how hard people have worked for me around me at the club, and it just means a lot to me. Was there any moment in the season, particularly where you, where that confidence went up? Because watching you, it seemed to be. That run that we went on, where it started just before Christmas, you were obviously putting in some brilliant performances before that. But after that, it seemed to be week by week there was something that didn't look like it should be getting saved. That was yeah. was was that your were you were you growing in stature during all that? Yeah, I think it was just finally everything that we've worked on at the training ground. You know, everything down to nutrition, to in the gym, to with Kalan, like everything. I think it just finally came together um, you know we were putting in solid performances and um, we, we, we kept saying me and Clem in meetings like, like we're playing well we're playing well but we just haven't made that save yet where you're like alright like, like, like we're there now and then obviously they started to come and it, from then on it was just about consistency about just carry on doing what we're doing and, and, and basically don't, don't let up on the gas a fair few of them saves in your back pocket now. <laughs> Are there any that stick out for you especially? Are there any favourites or ones that um, you've been especially proud of? I think, I think yeah, the one, Chef United's got to be the one. I think, you know, if, late on in the game, nil-nil, keep the run going and get a point for the team. How does a save like that come around? Obviously, we, you know the work you do on the training ground. How much of it is instinct compared to reading the situation, or is it just one of those things in the moment where you you have to just react? No, I think if you look at it, I think you know, like I work quite hard to see where the ball is, and I, I'm looking around, people looking through people, and I just want to see the ball leave his foot. That's all I'm trying to do, and and you know that's something that me and Clem have worked on, like which is something so so small and. It's something that Clem's worked on with me, and and then the feet, then the power that comes from Dan, and then me being six kilograms lighter from Nest has <laughs> all come together, and we've managed to tip it onto the post. Is that something that it's, it's gives you some sort of validity to all the work you've been doing when you have a moment like that, when you can watch the clips back and you kind of go, okay, this is worth the the diet that I'm on now, worth the, you know Clem putting me through ringer every day at Canal Side. <laughs> When that happens, you kind of go, OK, there is a bit of method to this madness. Well, but to, to be fair, like, I think me and Clem knew that it had started to come together because we were seeing it on the training ground. Yeah. Like, I, I felt myself being quicker, being more explosive. and um, It was just to do it in a match. It was sort of, like, we already knew that it was, it was there. It was just about getting, yeah. getting one out in a, in a match. It's an odd one, isn't it? Because... You'd almost think that when you were a younger lad, you'd have that quickness and explosion of through. You're 29 going 30 now, and you, you're entering your prime. It seems to happen with keepers. Why do you think that is? Is it kind of you've got the the theory of what being a goalkeeper is? That knowledge of, like you say, watching the ball come off the foot, all that sort of thing, all those years of experience behind you. But you've also now got the the physicality to match into that. Yeah, I think people just maybe need games. I think as a goalkeeper, I think. Getting, I, I don't think as a young goalkeeper you realise how important having 200, 150, 200 games under your belt matters. And, um, but it does matter, ultimately, like, like everyone t talks about it in football and there's a reason for that. And 
I can definitely back it up that I'm a lot better now because of, because of the experience that I've had in my career. One thing on that, that that you kept saying the last time we, we spoke after you won your fourth Player of the Month award from the, the club um, was that this time last year I wasn't playing and that, in a, in a weird sort of way, you wouldn't have wished it on yourself then, but does it almost make this all the sweeter now that you, you went through all of that then and, and this is the experience you're having this season? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I think it's because of what happened last year, it makes this a lot better, but I think... I also think that I wouldn't be doing as well if I was playing last year. I think I learned a lot about myself mentally, if, if nothing else. I think I come away from last season and I knew what I had to do. I knew, you know, like, like I, yeah, I just learned a lot about me, about myself. The one statistic that came up in our Twitter mentions today, I think you saw it as well, Alison. Edison, Lee Nichols is the top two <laughs> leagues in England, 17 clean sheets. Statistics like that have got to blow your mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, you know, I've had a few people text me about it and stuff, and yeah, I just, I just keep replying saying it's, it's crazy, you know? <laughs> is it, are those the things that, that make it worth it when sort of your mates and family and stuff are getting in touch and are so excited for you as well? Because it must have been an experience for them to have watched you not playing, coming to a different club, all that sort of thing. So it's a gamble, it might not have gone well mm. here, it, you know, it happens. Yeah. Um, but for it all to have worked out the way it has in this sort of, get this sort of accolade, are they as buzzing as you are? Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the whole family and every one of my friends are, are buzzing for me. Um, especially when you see things like that, as you say, it's, I think it means just as, much as, just as much to them as it does to me. How much has it helped you how well this team has gelled together because before we came here you were at the golf shop with Wardy and mm. you, you know you, you lads are getting on just as well off the pitch as you are on it and it's not a forced thing it's not as if somebody's sitting you down going look you need to be mates with him it's not school sort of thing it's just happened naturally mm. how much has that helped not just your season but the season everyone's enjoying I think it's a massive part of of us as a team I think it just you know, you can see it on the pitch. I think everyone fights for each other. I think, you know, you, like you, you look at most of the celebrations, it, it, there's always people who are on the bench in there. Or I think the gaffer put one up. I think it was Redden when Wardy scored his third, and Wardy runs to the opposite corner. But like the, the people that are warming up on the sideline are running around like they've scored themselves. And I think it just goes. I think it's just a massive part of who we are as a team. Have you ever experienced something like that at other clubs? Yeah, at, at MK we had a similar sort of thing, but it wasn't like as much as this. I think it, this is like something where you retire and you think that was the best dressing room in my career. Um, because I've never been in a dressing room as good as this. You know, MK was good, but this is, this is something different. Is there a moment in the season with the, between you lads and celebrations that have that stood out to you as sort of, where you've kind of sat there and gone, this is... I wasn't expecting this because I think we've had Harry Toffolo once say that you turned around to him in the dressing room and said, I love this team. And last night, even for example, when Navi went into the dressing room, the noise that came out of there, I, I'd hate to have been in there and been in, yeah. but the noise that came out of there, that, that doesn't seem to be something that, that happens just as a, as a rule in football. That seems to be something quite special. No, it is. It's de something definitely, sp it, it is special. And I think it's something that it needs to grow itself. It's something that can't be forced. I think it's, it's just the type of people that are in that dressing room. There's no bad eggs. There's no one that, there's no, there's no one that's selfish, and there's just a real togetherness in there. It's, it's, it, 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 it's. Everyone always says it's hard to explain, and it really is hard to explain. Speaking about things that you can't force and have to grow themselves, your relationship with our fan base is is absolutely brilliant as well. They've taken to you so quickly and you know we've mentioned the, the player of the month award and things what's that like for you to know that you know they're at your back you know the cow shed there or if we're away you've got such a, a vocal support and people who are not just willing you to do well but have such confidence in you no it's good like i think ever since the chef united game it was it was almost it, you just let help me settle in you know it's just everyone around the around the town when you're walking around and Everyone just saying hello and pictures all the time, and it, yeah, it's just it, it, it is. It did just help me settle in so quick, and 
and, and help me perform the way I have. As a Northern lad, is that something that is kind of special about clubs up here, the fact that they take you in and, and have you as one of their own and there is that real family feel to it because I mean no disrespect to elsewhere but it, it, there is a, an almost a charm to the way that people have kind of taken you under the wing and gone he's one of ours now we've taken ownership of him no definitely I think you know this this club's like a family it, it really is you know like as we just spoke about the dressing room but I think that goes from top to bottom I think the, um, the when we went at the end of the game and we we come together like that's come from the chairman and um, it just goes to show from top to bottom there's just a, a real togetherness. Is there, how much do you enjoy sort of the, the little bits of your game that, that the fans have picked up on because there's you know the odd yellow card that you know some people might get annoyed about they find hilarious or you know they back you on and you know some of the back and forth you've had with opposition players that we can't broadcast on here, but have <laughs> been picked up by people in the front rows and ball boys and what have you. They absolutely adore you for it. Is that is that nice for you that you're just yourself and being yourself has, has earned you so many fans? Yeah, like that's just me. I just <laughs> I just play the way I, I have and I always will. I think you know I've I've always been the loud the, one of the loudest on the pitch and I like to be heard. So. Yeah, we were um, a handful of games left this season. Uh, we're having an incredible year. Uh, what's the the mood like in the dressing room? What what goals have you guys set yourselves? Where are you looking to go this year? I think the obvious one is make playoffs. I think as much as we want to make playoffs, I think we all we all understand we've got to just take it game by game. There's no point in saying, right, come on, we only need this many left. That's, that's what we've done all season, that's what we've stuck by and that's what we need to do. Just keep on trying to win the next game. I'm going to be slightly cheeky here. Christmas time, there's a World Cup. The people have been <laughs> half mentioning you. We've said you've been in the under-19s before. They've got to take a squad of keepers. Is it something that even, you know, in the back of your mind you've gone, if I carry on playing as well as this, they've got to, at some point somebody's got to come and watch me and take notice. No, that's not my decision at the end of the day. It, if that call comes, then... I'll, I'll go running, but I'm just trying to play football. I'm just doing as best as I can for this club. And if something like that did come about, then it would be it, it would be a dream come true. Well, your best this season, Lee, is Skybet Championship Goalkeeper of the Year. So you can't do anything like that. Yeah. Congratulations, Ben. Thank you.